start looking to the sky with an open mind, you are going to see things that you never expected before. This time on Unexplained Mysteries, Global UFO Warning. A wave of sightings breaks out around the world. I saw blue lights and orange lights passing very quickly through very close to the plane. You'll hear actual radio transmissions of an encounter above New Mexico. A pilot of America West Airlines had seen an object between three and four hundred feet long. Lightning in the cloud at some distance uh, caused the object to be visible. We'll bring you the case study. Unknown craft causes emergency landing. So in transit with him. My landing gear was in transit, barely coming down. I'm making my turn, then I felt a very hard hit. A UFO harassed a plane over Argentina. What I always asked myself is how they could know the maneuvers I was going to make and if the object knew what I was thinking. And you'll find out why airlines want to keep their pilots quiet. It is a commercial judgment that pilots shouldn't speak about this. Military personnel report encounters with strange flying objects. Since the light was flying in a very strange way, it didn't fly like a normal plane. You know, this flying object is following them. And British officers saw something huge in the sky. Other officers uh, came across the radio as well to say that they'd seen the lights as well. That didn't show up on radar. We never even got our air defense aircraft into the air. A strange shining object hovered over the Rockies. At times it appeared to be a boomerang shape too, or a slight arc. And the amazing mass sighting in Mexico City. Hundreds of thousands of people went to the street. And you'll get the ultimate rundown in our Onyx Report. Here on Unexplained Mysteries, Global UFO Warning. You are about to hear an actual radio transmission of an extraordinary UFO sighting over New Mexico. The eyewitnesses are remarkably commercial airline pilots. Yeah, I work as an air traffic controller and a uh, pilot of America West Airlines had seen an object between three and 400 feet long. These audio tapes were released through the Freedom of Information Act. An America West pilot talks to air traffic control in Albuquerque. Yeah, off to our uh, 3 o'clock. Getting strokes out there. Can you tell us what it is? But nothing appeared on air traffic control's radar. There's nothing on their radar. Well, that object is up in the air. It's up in the air. They permit it. No, but no one knows anything about it. What's the altitude about? I don't know. Probably right around 30,000 or so. And uh, the length is unbelievable. Albuquerque Air Traffic Control, called NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, to see if they were tracking anything unusual. Anna, go ahead. Hey, do you know if there was anything like a tethered balloon or anything released that should be above high band? Uh, no, we haven't heard nothing about it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 39,000 says you see something at 30,000 that the, the length is unbelievable and it has a strobe on it. Uh-huh. This is not good. <laughs> okay. uh, what, what does that mean? I don't know. It's a UFO or something. He's right. It's right in time. And no, we haven't seen nothing like that. Okay, keep your eyes open. I'll start Kilo. The tapes were analyzed by a NASA expert. Back when we initially spotted it, it was between the weather and us, and when the lightning, you could see a dark object, and uh, it was pretty eerie looking. Well, the uh, pilot has just uh, discussed the sighting again in a little more detail with air traffic control at Albuquerque, and he said that he saw a dark object because it was back illuminated. Attempts to interview the pilots and air traffic controllers were denied per airline policy. They don't encourage you reporting it, that's for sure. A former United Airlines pilot of 35 years had a comparable encounter. When it was ready to leave, it departed at a very high rate of speed. The other crew members had never come forward. It is a commercial judgment that pilots shouldn't speak about this. Unfortunately, it's a fact of life that any 
UFO alliance with a UFO sighting or or anything unusual about a particular crew uh, member will downgrade the potential of that airline to a maximum profits. In Albuquerque, NARAD called air traffic control with an interesting development. We had someone call here earlier about a pilot uh, spotting an unidentified flying object. Yep, that's us. Okay, well, hey, we're tracking a, a search-only track kind of where that might have happened. It's tracking about 390 knots. Um, we've been tracking it for about three, four minutes now. I mean, to be going that fast, it's got to be up kind of high. And we got no code on it, huh? Nope, it's search-only. It seems that the radar controller was tracking a, an object, an unknown, that wasn't transponding. And um, by law, any, any craft in controlled airspace must have a transponder. But it's very interesting that ultimately it was seen by the radar controller. Experts believe this report is real because it was reported by a pilot and tracked by air traffic control and NORAD radar. I listened to the American West tape and um, my opinion is that it's absolutely authentic. If handled correctly, this tape could be something of a breakthrough. First time in 15 years I've ever seen anything like it. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, the mid-air collision between an airliner and an unidentified flying object. I'm making my turn when I felt a very hard hit. I've never felt a hit as strong as this. A mysterious craft that terrorized a plane load of passengers. People were very nervous. They, they didn't know what was happening. The bizarre encounter between the Iranian Air Force and a mothership. So I was so scared of what's going to happen and what happened to the pilots. The possible U.S.-Iran cover-up of the event. Certain agencies, uh, including the CIA, have gone on record as having information on this particular case. And a British defense official who tried to get to the bottom of a mass sighting. He drew a complete blank. This was a genuine unknown. The police officers who saw the UFO hover above their car. It was probably in our view for about 30 seconds. The sleepy Colorado town, shaken by an incredible sight. And I could see the three flashes come off to look like boomerangs and it was bright white. The sightings that astonished hundreds of thousands of eyewitnesses in Mexico City. The people were coming out of their homes. Automobiles were stopping in the streets and everyone was looking up at the sky. And you'll get the full wrap up with our Onyx Report. All this and more coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Global UFO Warning. When a passenger plane encounters a UFO, the result can be dangerous. Mexico City. My landing gear was in transit, barely coming down. making my turn when I felt a very hard hit. At that moment, I didn't know what it was. I've never felt a hit as strong as this. Ruano declared an emergency landing. Immediately, maintenance checked the airplane and found that the shock absorber had been torn off. The amount of damage was so severe, landing the plane was a risk. When I left the plane, I was in contact by phone with radar control, and they told me that the moment I was making my turn, there were two UFOs. The tower of control colors, you know, excited. Where you said it was a UFO, we just have an accident 
of a DC-9, and we had to have an emergency landing. The pilot is coming. He wants to talk to you. After Ruano went public with his UFO report, other pilots reported similar encounters. In the next 10 days, we have six sightings of pilots going almost landing in Mexico City. They have these sightings. But many pilots are reluctant to file their reports. In many ways, uh, they are connected to the FAA in the United States. And that's one reason they are worried, because in your country, this is a difficult matter. This is a very delicate matter. Well, if I were a pilot, uh, I'm not sure I would want to complicate my life by making a report either. Many pilots have made unofficial reports. I have commercial cases um, from almost every country of the world, by the way. Military sightings, uh, test pilot sightings, like the X-15, for instance. Uh, and NASA kind of test aircraft, and also uh, private pilots. Yet, the Mexican Association of Pilots has established procedures for collisions between planes and alien craft. What we are doing now, the pilots, is to be more attentive in coordination with radar control. The close encounters between passenger jets and UFOs are spreading. Bariloche, Argentina. Erlinas Argentinas, flight number 674, was coming in for a landing. Only two planes were in the sky. A passenger flight and a military jet several miles away. Then, something else appeared. Pasión. Our worries began when we saw the light. We consulted with the tower, and they said they didn't know of any other craft in the area. Air traffic control asked Polanco if he was talking about the military jet. He wasn't. The passengers could see something outside. The first impression was shock from the people inside the plane. The lights of the object were well defined. There was an orange light on top of it, green lights on the side, and the solid part of the object was dark. And it was close. I was looking through the window and I saw blue lights and orange lights passing very quickly through very close to the plane. We heard the AA pilot saying that there was something flying parallel to them. The controller said it couldn't be. They couldn't see anything. The control tower then called us to ask if we didn't see anything some feet above the AA flight and paying attention to its communication. We told the controller that we couldn't see anything. Just after that, we heard the AA pilot say that the lights of the airport had gone out. Ground crew struggled to turn the lights back on in time for the plane to land. There was a general power cut throughout the city which made us use the emergency services at the airport. I told the control tower that we couldn't generate electricity anymore and that they should tell the plane to start an escape maneuver because we couldn't keep even the emergency lights on properly. Without airport lights, Polanco had to abort his landing. That's when Colonel Sapuzak claims he saw a blinking amber light race by at about 800 miles an hour. Suddenly, the light flew up above his jet. The lights at the runways on the airport were gone. We started our escape maneuver, and I noticed that the crew started getting nervous. People were very nervous. They, they didn't know what was happening, and uh, they were asking, wondering what, what was happening that uh, we couldn't land. Polanco says the object seemed to wait for his plane over a nearby lake. We saw the UFO again, waiting for us in our trajectory. Once we finished our turn toward the airport, the UFO disappeared below us. Suddenly, the airport lights came back on, and Polanco was able to land. We were approached by the airport director who asked me for the report of what had happened. He had to take it to the authorities. But the Air Force refused to conduct an official investigation. Polanco took matters into his own hands. I decided not to keep quiet about it, so I decided to let the public know what happened that night. 
I would like to know what it was, since the light was flying in a very strange way. It didn't fly like a normal plane. Polanco is obsessed with what he saw, because he claims he could sense an alien intelligence. I had the impression that this object could foresee what I was thinking. This is an experience that has changed me for the rest of my life. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, Iran takes on an enemy more powerful than anything they've ever encountered before. And it was coming toward them. They tried to shoot him down. When they squeezed the trigger, it didn't work. And the obvious cover-up. I don't know why this information is prohibited from the public. The UFOs reported by hundreds of British police and military personnel. The object was black, and it appeared to be shaped something like a wedge shape. And the one man who tried to find out what they had seen. It couldn't be explained, and there may well be some extraterrestrial explanation. The family who saw something strange in the Colorado sky. I looked up again, and I see uh, a very intense, bright, shimmering white light. You'll hear about one of the most amazing mass sightings in history. I was looking to an object that I have never seen before. And we'll give you the complete analysis in our audience report. It's all coming up here on Unexplained Mysteries. Mysteries, global UFO warning. Military sightings around the world are skyrocketing. Tehran, Iran. Air traffic controllers track a giant object in the night sky near Maribad Air Force Base. It was larger than an airliner. When I saw this object, is flying that fast, then I thought this is not a helicopter and this is not an aircraft. By that time I said, oh, should be some kind of a UFO. The Air Force scrambled an F-4 with their best pilot to get a closer look. At 23,000 feet, the pilot radioed that he saw a bright object. Then he got closer. His instruments became magnetized and unreadable may suggest a deliberate kind of control mechanism such that when the airplane is no longer a threat, it can change the, the radiation so that the systems on board the airplane come back to normal. I put down my phone and I run to my balcony to see if I can see that object. I saw a big star among the other stars, which was at least twice as large as the normal star. I asked the car, what happened and he said we lost the communication again. So I was so scared what's going to happen and what happened to the pilots. When the plane moved away, communication and instrument control returned. So I asked from the car controller to tell them to continue their mission and see if they can get more information from the lineup. The pilot reported that a smaller object had separated from the large one and was bearing down on him. And it was coming toward them. They tried to shoot him down. When they squeezed the trigger, it didn't work. And the tr trigger was inoperative. They couldn't shoot the missiles. We understood that the eject instrument also does, uh, didn't work. So in this case, I said to God, oh, God saved him. The pilot tried to evade the object when he got 10 miles away from the mothership. His instruments were restored. The small object veered off and landed on a nearby mountain. While they were landing, the car was screaming on the phone to me. General, this flying object is following them and is going to land in Mirabar. The larger ship followed the F-4 back to the base and flew by the tower. All the power on the base went out. 
that was strange for us and we ask each other why the power went out for some seconds there are other cases well documented where power has been disrupted on the ground over fairly large areas during ufo presence the mothership flew off to the west later that same night it was seen over cairo then lisbon it could be a spy airplane i really have no idea but maybe from some other war iranian newspapers immediately story. At first, it was front page news. But then, the apparent cover-up began, as the military put a clamp on any interviews. I don't know why the appropriate authority prohibited me to interview with the press. As the story got around that the whole thing was a hoax, General Yousefi continued to search for evidence. I asked from the pilot of the F-4 to go and to look after that flying object. But their instruments registered a strange electronic sound. The beeping sound that was picked up uh, could be one of a number of things. It might be um, technology. In fact, depending on the frequency stability and interfrequency pulse and other factors like that, uh, it very likely is a technology of some sort as opposed to a natural phenomenon. And a U.S. spy satellite also tracked unknown signals that same night over Tehran. We saw something. That's an independent confirmation that an event of some type occurred at that time and place. What it was, we don't know. Certain agencies, uh, including the CIA, have gone on record as having information on this particular case. Was U.S. intelligence involved in a cover-up with the Iranian military? That somebody thought this case was very, very important when it happened. And the American people deserve to know what happened. Former Iranian generals claimed they shared information on the UFO with the U.S. government. No, I was convinced that was a UFO. As far as uh, my experience is concerned, it can be American airplane it can be russian it can be any technology to be like that except some super technology which is only ufo the highlight of the information that we gave to the u.s government was the high rate of uh, crime and high rate of extradition that we saw from the ufo whether or not there was a cover-up the generals believe what they saw I don't have any doubt about UFO. UFO exists, and they're trying to find some way to get contact with all of them. Later on Unexplained Mysteries, the strange incidents that occurred one night in England. And it was without doubt one of the most major waves of sightings that Britain had ever seen. The policeman who saw the flying object the timing of their sighting was exactly the same as the timing of our sighting. The Salida Encounter, a rare daytime UFO. At first, I thought those guys were crazy. I was like, that's a bomb. And then when it started moving around, I was like, I couldn't believe it. In Mexico City, an unprecedented mass sighting. Thousands of witnesses. Hundreds of UFOs. This was a, a, a massive phenomenon. And we put all the facts together for you in our Unex Report, coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, Global UFO Warning. Nick 
Pope was a flying saucer skeptic when he started working in Britain's Ministry of Defense. What he learned there changed his mind forever. I'd been doing the UFO job for uh, a year or so when a case came along which really changed my perception on the whole UFO mystery. And it was without doubt one of the most major waves of sightings that Britain had ever seen. Hundreds of police and military personnel saw a huge UFO, but defense radar did not detect it. The object was black and it appeared to be shaped either something like a wedge shape or a delta wing shape or indeed like a catamaran, a twin hulled craft. There were lights on this on this craft which they appeared to be at either end of it which they described um, as about 500 feet apart. Pope fielded numerous reports of the object. I checked aircraft movements, uh, satellite tracks, um, airships, weather balloons, but after an extremely detailed inquiry, I drew a complete blank. This was a genuine unknown. But Pope was particularly intrigued by the account of two Devon policemen who saw the unidentified craft up close. Gus and I both sort of looked at each other and just stopped the car and we got out. Certainly the three lights that we saw, I certainly formed the opinion that they were fixed to the same object, albeit I couldn't see any object, travelling at the same speed, and had it been a conventional sized aircraft, it would have been a deafening noise. It was probably in our view for about 30 seconds. It was really, strange. really strange, yeah. Those are the three lights in the position, and uh, that's our vehicle. You just don't know what to say, do you? Then it's the first time you come across something like that. They found out that others had witnessed the strange silent lights in the sky. Another officer in Cornwall came up over the radio and said that he had seen these lights. And then other officers uh, came across the radio as well to say that they'd seen the lights as well. Calls were coming into headquarters from officers all over southern England. The other officers who saw these lights, albeit some of those officers were in excess of 60 or 70 miles away from where we were, the timing of their sighting was exactly the same as the timing of our sighting, which, putting the whole thing together, makes it even bigger mystery. Police officers are reliable, and they're not given to, to flights of fancy, as far as we're concerned. Pope discovered the Royal Air Force had no clue what the object was either. He, he realized that something had happened, and he seems to have gone out of his way to be as helpful as he possibly could by sending me a letter with, with the map on it, of course. We've never had this before from anybody in that position. Pope also sent out a list of military bases that had reported the UFO. We got to reports from military personnel of a sizable craft operating very low over two of our military bases and there was nothing on radar so we never had any warning and we never even got our air defense aircraft into the into the air but the fact is that an unknown craft crossed right across these counties and the RAF do not appear to have picked it up on their radar the Air Force's sophisticated technology did not detect a giant craft in their airspace. But experts suspect alien vessels are able to move above the Earth at will. That's got to be extremely worrying. And that's got to mean that this whole UFO sighting is a matter of extreme defense significance. It couldn't be explained, and there may well be some extraterrestrial explanation to a hard core of these UFO sightings. Salida, Colorado, a quiet town 7,000 feet above sea level. The calm was disrupted by a UFO. Approximately 9.30, me and my daughter Brandy came out here and uh, she has said that she looked up in the sky to see if it was going to rain that day. If it was going to rain or lightning or something, we couldn't go camping, so I looked up and I saw it. What they saw was amazing. I looked up again and I see 
uh, a very intense, bright, shimmering white light. At times, it appeared to be a boomerang shape, too, or a slight arc. Edwards called the restaurant he owned and asked if anyone there saw the object. Come out here, about right here, a little beyond the door, and I could see the three flashes come off that looked like boomerangs, and it was bright white. At first, I thought those guys were crazy. I was like, that's dumb. And then when it started moving around, I was like, I can't believe it. Mr. Edwards' uh, video is some of the best uh, footage that I've seen. Um, purely for the fact that, number one, it's a daylight sighting. There are multiple witnesses. Um, it's a very large object, or appears to be a very large object, and we just don't get that many credible, good daylight sightings. Computer analysis on the videotape reveals undeniable evidence. So after you stabilize the image, you can see its motion much more clearly. Based on what I know of, of atmospheric flight, it doesn't look like any conventional aircraft. Could it be otherworldly technology? Yes, it could. Could it be military aircraft? Yes, it could. Could it be some unexplained weather phenomena? That's also possible. Tim Edwards needs to find out what his family saw that day. I've been obsessed trying to get the information, the facts out of, out of this case and the truth. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, an epidemic of sightings rocks Mexico City. This was a, a massive phenomenon. Hundreds of UFOs caught on tape. I looked at the sky and there were some bubbles. While I'm taping, I observed through the lens that it split or separated. I was looking to an object that I have never seen before. And then, our Onyx Report. We're going to get the answers to all your questions about the global UFO phenomenon. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries. Global UFO Warning. Mexico City, a day of widespread sightings, makes history. Thousands, I would say hundreds of thousands of people went to the streets of Mexico, and all of them looked at very strange things. This was a, a, a massive phenomenon. Hundreds of UFOs were captured on tape. Uh, we are so small and the universe is something so big, we cannot begin to understand all that is out there. Residents saw different objects throughout the city. It was an object that was flying at a low altitude in the area in which I live. It was an object in the form, say, of a top, and it was suspended over a tower revolving around. It stopped spinning and began to move across. Then it hid itself behind a building. I looked at the sky and there were some bubbles. To me it looked like a pearl, so I shot it with my camera. While I'm taping, I observed through the lens that it split or separated. Many of the UFOs were far away, but some flew close by. Just in front of me, approximately 1,500 feet, uh, I was looking to an object that I have never seen before. I can tell you that was not normal. It was suspended in the air. It was moving just a little bit to the sides, up and down and left and right, uh, in the same place for, for almost 15 minutes. 
Many of the most reliable eyewitnesses were reporters, trained to observe detail. We went to the building next door in order to tape some lights that all the people were watching, the journalists and the cameramen. First there was one object, and then two. The people were coming out of their homes. Automobiles were stopping in the streets, and everyone was looking up at the sky. A long time ago, there was disbelief. I think among the media professionals, the journalists. But now, with so many occurrences, we believe and we accept things the way they are. Photos, videos, people's comments. They have shown us that something else exists. Right? Not just us. Although the sightings made headlines in Mexico, the U.S. media seemed uninterested. I believe that American people should learn from this experience. I think that if you start looking to the sky with an open mind, you are going to see things that you never expected before. If you want to really be really truthful and you believe this is real, you have to tell it. A Department of Defense scientist analyzed the tapes. His conclusions were surprising. Initially, we took some time to look at uh, a blow-up and enlargement of the object that everybody sees in the motion video and happened to see a flash of light down in this area of the screen. He enlarged the flash of light and noticed that it didn't follow the geometry of the rest of the image. There seemed to be another spot right in here. Um, that was this area in here was flashing or strobing occasionally and here we saw again something that didn't seem to be sensible with the rest of the image it's pretty much not anything that we can readily identify as an existing aircraft or helicopter the US media may be reluctant to pursue UFO stories for fear of public ridicule if you have the courage and you believe in it and it's true, uh, you will be supported by people. And to do that uh, is very risky. And I know that's why many of my partners probably in the United States don't do that. Many feel the stories brought to the Mexican media have a hopeful message. If they are here, we will be there tomorrow. They are proving with their presence here that it's possible to travel through the stars. Next, the Onyx Report will give you the final wrap-up. The civilian pilots who encountered strange crafts. The unknown object that attacked an Iranian F-4. Police officers who saw a large silent vehicle in the skies over England. And more on the mass sighting in Mexico City. You'll get the lowdown in the Onyx Report next. The Onyx Report. Here are the facts behind the global UFO warning. Real-life radio transmissions detail an incredible sighting. High above New Mexico, an America West flight crew saw a giant object flying below them. Yeah, up to uh, 3 o'clock, then some strokes out there. Did you tell us what it is? But when the pilot called air traffic control, he heard something unexpected. There's something on their radar. Well, on that object that's up here. Radar tracking at NORAD could only guess at what it was. This is not good. <laughs> hey, wait, what does that mean? I don't know. It's a UFO or something. Lightning in the cloud at some distance uh, caused the object to be visible. Uh, he then said it looked eerie. It seems that the radar controller was tracking a, an object, an unknown, that wasn't transponding. And um, by law, any, any craft in controlled airspace must have a transponder. A Mexican flight turned dangerous when an unknown object slammed into the plane. Was it a UFO? I'm making my turn when I felt a very hard hit. 
At that moment, I didn't know what it was. There were two UFOs. Another incident occurred over Argentina. An unusual craft was seen by a plane's terrified passengers and flight crew. The first impression was shock from the people inside the plane. People were very nervous. They, they didn't know what was happening. Halfway across the world, the Iranian Air Force encountered objects that posed a serious threat to their security. It was coming toward them. They tried to shoot them down. When they squeezed the trigger, it didn't work. When I saw this object is flying that fast, then I thought this is not a helicopter and this is not an aircraft. I said to God, oh God, save them. In England, hundreds of police and military workers saw an enormous UFO. Was it an alien ship? It was without doubt one of the most major waves of sightings that Britain had ever seen. The object was black and it appeared to be shaped either something like a wedge shape or a delta wing shape. And there was nothing on radar, so we never had any warning and we never even got our air defense aircraft into the, into the air. In Colorado, a family was alarmed when they saw a strange object in the sky. I see uh, a very intense, bright, shimmering white light. At times, it appeared to be a boomerang shape, too, or a slight arc. Then when it started moving around, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I looked beyond the door, and I could see the three flashes come off that looked like boomerangs, and it was bright white. Could it be otherworldly technology? Yes, it could. The most spectacular mass sighting of all, Mexico City. I would say hundreds of thousands of people went to the streets of Mexico, and all of them looked at very strange things. I looked at the sky, and there were some bubbles. Just in front of me, approximately 1,500 feet, uh, I was looking to an object that I have never seen before. I can tell you that was not normal. It was suspended in the air. And what about the evidence that points to a possible cover-up? I don't know why the appropriate authorities prohibited me to interview with the press or re uh, news reporter. The party line, the Ministry of Defense standard view, is that UFOs are of no defense significance. Eyewitnesses all over the world are seeing unidentified flying objects. Civilians, pilots, policemen, military personnel. The evidence of a global UFO phenomenon stands for itself. But the final answer must remain an unexplained mystery. UFO exist and they're trying to find some way to get contact with our world. If they are here, we will be there tomorrow.